Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about mesh routers. We've already talked about a few on the channel in the last few weeks and today I want to focus on the TP-Link Deco. Now the Deco is easily right now one of the most affordable mesh routers currently available right now to home and small business users. The device itself retails this three node pack so that's three mesh routers in one box. Um, arrived at just 180 quid, which is incredibly competitive. More than 100 quid more than some of the brands that are out there right now and 200 quid less than some of the others. Um, and again, with what my main things I look at when I'm looking at mesh routers at the moment is comparing these, one, against obviously popular routers such as the Google Wi-Fi and that Linksys one that we reviewed on the channel and of course the Netgear Orbi, but also where it sits compared with Synology's mesh system because I've talked about their mesh system a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm going through every single one of these, speed testing them, setting them up, sort of seeing what's good and what's bad and then comparing them all against the Synology mesh router system, the RT2600 and the MR2200AC. Now there are pros and cons as this is a very affordable uh, device, you will be su not hugely surprised to know that there is a hint of compromise about it. This hardware review, we're going to break down into two stages, but I will tell you some about st things about this device on a software and utility level. Now, each node has got is AC1300 with two no uh, t four internal antenna inside. Uh, that 1300 or AC1300 is representative of a dual band network there with one band that's 2.4 gigahertz which gives you up to about 400 megabits per second and that five gigahertz network that gives you 867 megabits per second or to be realistic they round it up to 900 and there's where you get your 1300 ac but what's particularly interesting about this device is it manages even at this affordable level to give you a level of software and ability that you know you weren't getting from ones like that Linksys from before. One of my biggest problems with the Linksys Velop series that we talked about in an older video was that it seemed to put all of the top end features behind a subscription paywall. This doesn't seem to do that, but we'll learn more in the software review. So for now, the, um, each one of the nodes features two LAN ports, two RJ45 one GBE ports, uh, which can be operated both as LAN or one as a WAN and one as a, a LAN. It's also got adaptive routing technology, which I'm not going to hamper on too much. Basically, every single one of these mesh router brands has their own patented technology for the nodes communicating, and they use their own fancy in acronym, so we're not going to bother with looking at that too much. Also, the Deco features Bluetooth 4.2, uh, which is utilized during the initial setup, but beyond that, I'm not too certain, we'll find out more later. It's got auto um, path selection and self-healing, which means that it will designate the best node for your connected device at any given time, as well as the ability to, if one of them is disconnected from the network or an obstruction is temporarily put between different nodes, once the other node can be refound, which it will do automatically, it will heal the mesh network and that coverage will be reinstated. Now, um, it is completely set up and operated by a mobile app. And for those that watch my Linux, um, uh, sorry, my Linksys video will know how disappointed I am when you've only got a mobile app to configure with. Don't get me wrong, it's incredibly useful and user friendly, but there's still no denying it that utilizing a mobile app only is particularly off putting to businesses. And small or big business alike, if you've got multiple staff, the last thing you want is mobile applications on phones being the means with which you configure and adapt and basically communicate with your network system and you want to use uh, a standard pc in that network environment most of the time so again there's that app tp deco app but we'll review that in a later video too um, it features wpa2 security so you can ex uh, push it beyond your existing network and of course you can connect the device to your existing router that one from your internet service provider much like any old router once you connect that to your internet service provider router, you need to deactivate that Wi-Fi, otherwise you're going to have difficulties. The idea is that you utilize maybe the multiple LAN collect connections on the rear of your host router, connect this to one of the Deco uh, mesh routers, and then deactivate the Wi-Fi network on the ISP's router and utilize that mesh network only. Um, on top of that, the device 
also features device priority support, parental controls, guest network support. What that means in real terms for a number of you is one, the priority network, you can assign certain devices to always take priority so they will always get the network connectivity they need. You've got that guest network support so you can create a sub network underneath or, or running parallel with your primary network. So if you've got friends staying over, if it's a business or like a hotel or something like that, you can create that guest network where you can control the amount of access and abilities you can utilize that. Maybe even down to the website level, but we'll find out more in the software reveal. Um, on top of that, we've got those parental controls, the depth of which might be a problem. And again, I'm looking forward to the software review because in the software review, we're gonna be able to see the extent of those parental controls. Is it gonna be like a Synology when you've got that Google Safe um, Google Safe Search combined with router management, or is it gonna be the flip side a little bit like Linksys, where it's incredibly limited unless you went for that paid Linksys Shield subscription. Um, and finally, the device is compatible with Alexa and IFIT or IFTTT, um, for that smart home environment and that voice control. Though the voice controls between Alexa and this are a little limited by comparison. And finally, the device features a three years manufacturer's warranty. So, what do we get here? Well, we're gonna move over to another camera and we're gonna start the unboxing of this device and get a closer look at it. Because what we want to know is two things. One, is this a good router? So is this gonna be better than this? And second thing, is it going to be better than a wireless um, power line adapter, something that you connect at one end of your home office and create a separate Wi-Fi network. Is this going to be better or worse than that? So let's make our way to the other camera and start looking at this piece of hardware. Right, so we've got the deco here on the table. So without further ado, let's get that plastic off and start unboxing this hardware to see what we get inside. Now again, it's worth mentioning that this is still the most affordable mesh router as of this time of recording now on the 2nd of April. But what I will say is that although it is the most affordable, it's not exactly earth shatteringly fast according to the settings mentioned. The retail box there that we see, you know, it's quite nice. It reminds me a lot of a BT product, not really a Netgear or anything like that. And on the inside, it does state all that information about the CPU, the different bands that are available on it and everything we talked about earlier on. But what about the device itself? Because the Google Wi-Fi is something I'm still quite looking forward to getting my hands on. Because although it's older, it definitely is the most appealing to the eye. And I'll be interested to see how this device is going to look when it's set up in the home on, uh, you know, in your network environment. So straight away, what I will say is these are going to look very, very, um, uh, minimalistic in your home. They're quite small. They look like fire detectors or CO2 detectors. Um, they've got that LED they've built into the middle. And if we look at the rear there, we've got ventilation on the back. There's a power port there. It doesn't have the USB power that we saw uh, on the Google Wi-Fi, but on the rear, we've got those two LAN ports there that can be used either both as LAN or one as a WAN and one as a LAN. Um, there's three of them in this pack and do remember that price threshold there. I'm quite surprised by the level of the retail packaging here for something as affordable as this. Um, and we remove all three of those, we can see what else is included in our box. There's a bit of nice blurb there and information about the LED lights that are inside. Um, and again, you do set this up using that mobile phone application. And at the bottom there, we've got even more. So let's carry on moving forward with that. In our first box, we can have a look there. And this appears to be maybe instructions or warranty, but it's our quick start installation guide. Moving forward from there, let's pop that to one side. We can have a look at these PSUs in a bit actually, but for now, let's look at the LAN cable. It's a nice standard LAN cable there. Doesn't state whether it's a Cat6, I think it's a Cat5, but it may be a Cat6A. Um, and again, not huge length, but you shouldn't need more than one for this device, if, particularly if you're going to utilize your existing uh, ISP router with it remove one of these PSUs and see how they look and the PSU little cheap gotta say that is not a nice cable that's not gonna do so well under pressure that cable when you look at some of the ones that the Synology arrived with or even Google Wi-Fi's those those cables were quite nice I mean again if I grab one of those I'll show you Here we have the cable for Google Wi-Fi, and again, 
Um, the cable itself is a lot thicker and of course uses USB-C, whereas this one is a quite kind of cheap plastic feel. And PSUs are one of those areas where companies time and time and again seem to make economies where they shouldn't. Um, and again, you've got three PSUs inside this device that I'm not going to bother opening them all up. It seems a bit redundant. But if we can move forward from there, we can see if there's any other accessories with this device. Looks like there isn't. Just a big old sheet of foam. And that's your lot. So, let's take a closer look at these little TP Link mesh routers. Again, they look like fire detectors. I'm going to keep saying that. They're quite swishly designed. I will say that they look... Um, a little bit easier in the home than the Synology, but I would also argue the Synology has much, much greater coverage in terms of these mesh routers at 2,200 uh, megabits per second across all the bands, whereas this is only going to go up to 13. So if we look at the rear of the Synology by comparison, we can see Synology's got that USB port, and we will be doing a full comparison of this at a later date. But for now, I do think the TP-Link will definitely look better in your home but beyond that, when we think about things like hardware, when we think about the software and what it's fully capable of, because they can look as nice as anything, but if they can't find each other and that self-healing and that priority networking doesn't kick in, then what you have here is some very pretty junk. But at this price, it's, it has to be said, easily still the most affordable mesh network you can buy right now, and I'm looking forward to doing those software tests soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video where we're going to be going through the software on this and a bunch of other mesh routers and comparing them with each other and of course the Synology router. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.